Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I'm uh, reading from Mark 8, 22 through 31. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His eyes, his sight, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't go into the village. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he said, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Well, it's good to be with you folks today, and uh, sure appreciate uh, Brother Dale for asking me to, to come and, and preach, and it's, it's, I consider it a, a great honor, and um, I'm glad to have my, my, my wife, my lovely, lovely wife with me today. Uh, she wasn't able to come the, the last couple of times we were here, so really glad to have her, uh, Terry. And uh, glad to also have my daughter, Becca, with me, with us today, too. Beautiful service uh, so far. I really enjoyed it today. And, um, of course, if you're, you're probably already there in Mark chapter 8. And uh, we'll begin again in verse 22. Uh, but before we do, uh, let's go ahead and, and go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Lord Jesus. Lord, that we can, we can be made worthy in your blood, that we can be saved by your grace. We're especially thankful, most of all, for that today and for Jesus. Dear Lord, I just ask that you would, as Brother Derek mentioned earlier today, uh, Lord, I just ask that you'd make me a conduit of your word, of your love, of your wisdom today. And Lord, I just pray that, um, that you would bless and, and work in all of our lives. And we, we pray for the church, Lord, as they are going through this transition, period. And Lord, we just pray that you would give them wisdom and help them, Lord, to follow your leading in, in searching for uh, the, uh, the leadership, a pastor. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would be with them in a special way during this time. And we uh, pray that you'd be with everyone here, every need, Lord. We pray for uh, lost loved ones that we have that need to be saved and um, we pray for uh, just that you would bless today in, in all the churches across the world, Father, that you'd have your will and way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to bring a message today called Adjusting the Lens or Getting It in Focus. How many of you like to take pictures? All right, great. 
How many of you men like to have your picture taken? <laughs> I, I thought so. <laughs> but, you know, as, as you folks know, as you know, with your, uh, as you take pictures, maybe some of you especially are, are into that. You have special cameras and all of that. But regardless of, of what camera it is, you, you want to get the picture in focus, don't you? That, that's one of the most important things in taking a picture. And today I'd like for us to look at this theme of seeing Jesus, others, and direction and purpose for our lives more clearly each day as we walk hand in hand with Him. Uh, we're, we're not going to so much talk about seeing others, but I'd, I'd just like to say something about the fact that it is, it's so important that we see others the way God sees them. That should be our prayer, that, that God would help us to see others like He sees them. And of course, that's so uh, important as we minister to, to people. So, um, so let's look at, at verse 22. And uh, also, um, before we, we look at the, continue with looking at the scripture, um, there's a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12 that says, For now we see through a dark glass, but then face to face. And we're going to see that when Jesus healed this man, this blind man, it, it was a, um, it, it was kind of a different way that, that Jesus worked. Uh, oftentimes, Jesus would, um, you know, tell the person, you know, be healed, or he would touch them. Uh, but this time, it was it was a unique way in in which he did this, and uh, it was actually a, a progressive way. So let let's look at the scriptures here, verse number twenty-two. And he, Jesus, came to Beth Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and of course that's significant there as we think about walking hand in hand with Jesus, and led him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught or anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that he put his hands, Jesus put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. So it wasn't just an immediate thing, it was kind of a progressive thing. And I think that there's, um, there's, a, there's a spiritual truth here that, that we can apply to our lives today. And that is the progression of spiritual clarity. How our, we're going to look at how our spiritual vision is renewed day by day. And as the scriptures say, here a little and there a little. But along with this theme of, of spiritual vision progression, we also see the very different ways in which God works. God works in unique and mysterious ways. You've, you've heard that before. God, uh, I'm sure you've heard that many times, how God works in mysterious ways. And sometimes when something happens to us, or God tells us to do something, it doesn't, make, it, it doesn't seem to make any sense. You know? Um, but, you know, it doesn't make sense to the natural mind. But what does the scripture say in Isaiah? That his ways and his thoughts are much higher than ours. And so, yes, as we see in verse 23, we see um, that he took the blind man by the hand and he led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, well, that's, that's pretty unusual. Pretty unusual there. But once again... God 
Oftentimes, that's the way God works in unusual ways in our lives. You know, as in our relationship to God, as, as, as God's children, each one of us, each one of you, is unique. And, and not only that, but each, each church is unique to God as well. We, we are not cookie-cut Christians, or, or churches either, for that matter. We, we don't have to be like the other church. Oh, we, 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 we should line up with Scripture always, but our methods, as long as they're ethical and scriptural, they don't always have to match up with another church or another person, do they? Because each one of us are unique in God's hands. And each of his churches are unique as well to, to accomplish his purposes. So let's look at this, this idea or this theme of, of spiritual uh, uh, clarity, spiritual vision progression here. How our, our vision, our spiritual vision is renewed day by day. Well, first of all, the moment we come to Jesus and receive Him as our Savior, we are no longer children of darkness, but children of light. Amen? We are in the light, the light of Jesus, the light of the world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says there, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of of Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord for the light, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ and how we can come into that light the moment we get saved. And number two in this progression, we see that though we do not see everything clearly, we are no longer blind. We're no longer in darkness. Praise the Lord. As Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12 and 13 says, giving thanks unto the Father who has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light or the saints of the light of Jesus who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Boy, aren't those some wonderful words there? The Lord Jesus has, has translated us into the kingdom. Uh, let me back up. From the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, the Lord Jesus. Praise God. We're no longer in darkness. We're in the light. Walking in the light of Jesus as, as Christians, as, as saved ones. And then number three in the progression of our, our vision, our spiritual vision, we see that, how, how does this take place? How do we, are we able to see more and more, clearer and clearer each day in, in, our, in our Christian walk? It is, it happens by the presence, power, and wisdom of our Lord Jesus and His Spirit. God's presence and power and wisdom as we walk hand in hand with our Lord and Savior, with our Lord Jesus each and every day, with a willing heart to do His will. That's, that's so important. When, when God wanted the Israelites to, to bring, of their, uh, bring their offerings to the temple, uh, you know, to, to bring their offerings uh, before Moses to, so that they could build the tabernacle. What was one of the things that God wanted from them as they gave? A willing heart. Not grudgingly, but willingly. Being willing to do God's will in, in everything that we do. Having a willing heart to do His will. Even in the tiniest or as we mentioned, unusual things that He wants us to do. Walking hand in hand with Jesus. 
with a willing heart to do His will each and every day. God said in the book of Psalms, Psalms 32 and verse 8, He said, I will guide you with my eye. I will guide you with my eye. Now, in order for God to guide us with His eye, we've got to be focused on Him, don't we? We have to be each and every day. We have to be looking, watching, waiting for, for His every move and the slightest movement of His eye to do His will. I will guide you with my eye. God is saying, I will guide, I believe God is saying today, I, I will guide this church with my eye. Just follow me. Just follow me and He will guide you in this transition and in everything. Then in the next few verses, we see um, we see an example of this clear vision as God revealed spiritual insight to Peter. All right, so we, we see an example of, of uh, being able to see more clearly each day as far as in our spiritual sight. Look at verse 27. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom do you say? that I am. And Peter answered and said unto him, You are the Christ, the Son. And in John, in, in Matthew chapter 16, you, you'll find the complete phrase there. He said, he said also, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the one that we've been looking for. for. The, the Savior of the world, the one to uh, forgive us of our sins and, and save us. And, and you're the Messiah, the one we've been looking for. And, and Jesus, it says in verse 30, that he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. And, and then if we, if we were to go... Uh, over to Matthew chapter 16, he also told Peter, he said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. Peter, you have said, you've hit the nail on the head. You have, you have said correctly. You are correct. You, you, you get an A, uh, you know, that, that answer is, is correct, absolutely right. But my Father revealed it to you. And so as, as we walk with our Lord close to Him each and every day, hand in hand, the Lord reveals His truth to us. We know that as we read the Word of God, it's, it's the Holy Spirit that is our teacher. That's why we can understand the Bible, is because our, the Holy Spirit is there alongside of us to, to teach us and show us God's truth. So, God revealed to Peter who Jesus was, who He really was. And, and to the disciples. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, it's all about Jesus, isn't it? Our, our life, our church, it's all about Jesus. And I'd like to um, read something to you here about Jesus. And it's, it's actually a, a quote by 
Bruce Marciano, the man that played Jesus in, in the Gospel of Matthew. And here's what he says about Jesus. He was a man you could count on. A solid man. A man you could trust. A humble, gentle man who would stop everything he was doing to care for you. No matter how dirty or messed up you happen to be. A heroic man who would stand up for you no matter how many stood against you. A giving, selfless man who would risk everything for you no matter the personal cost. An honest man who told it like it was and got killed for it. Simply put, the greatest man you'd ever want to meet, this man named Jesus as he was and as he still is. I'm so glad that God loves us, that the Lord Jesus died for us. And he loves you and he loves this church. And so what should we do? As just like the Lord Jesus did something a little bit different here in this miracle of, of healing the blind man. He caused a, a progression. He, he, was, uh, he healed progressively here. It's, it's that way for us in our Christian life, isn't it? Each and every day, walking with Him, seeing more clearly each day the Lord Jesus others direction and purpose for our lives and so folks let's draw near to Jesus amen let's draw near to him each day and let him perfect our spiritual vision let him help us to see him more clearly each and every day let's pray Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. And Lord, I, I just pray that you would help us, Lord, to, to be what you'd have us to be for your glory as, as individuals and as, as this church as well. Lord, I just pray that you would, um, once again, I just ask that you would Help this church, Lord, to, to follow your leading, Lord, and your direction and purpose and plan. And we uh, thank you so much for, for your love. And thank you, Lord, for working in our lives. Lord, we uh, so oftentimes we, we feel so unworthy. But, Lord, you've made us worthy in your blood. You've, you've made us holy. You've, you've sanctified us. And you continue to sanctify us as we walk with you each and every day. Help us to continue on. Um, I pray that you would, would help the, the, the backsliders and, and, and bring them, Lord, back in, into your will, into your way. The, the prodigals, Lord, bring them back to you. And uh, Lord, help us to follow you each and every day, to stay in your will and to keep our eyes upon you, to allow you to adjust our lenses, focus, Lord, upon you and, and see things the way you see them. That we might have guidance and, and direction and, and wisdom in our lives each day. We pray these things now in your precious name. Amen.